Hi, Rick Davis here again from LearnTVProduction.com. Today we're going to continue talking about writing tips. Here is part two of an interview I did with Katarina Gerlach, a German published author. Katarina shares numerous ideas that will help you to become a better writer. Please enjoy. How do you manage to keep the momentum going when you actually sit down to write? One trick I learned is to stop in the middle of a sentence. So when I stop on Monday, I write half the paragraph of what I'm planning to write, um, what I'm planning to start with the next day, and I stop right in the middle of a sentence. And then I uh, close the the documents and go away. And when I return the next day and I open the document, I know exactly what needs to be there to finish the sentence. And then the rest of the paragraph. And then the muse kicks in and writes the rest. That's a fabulous tip. Of course, you've, you, you're literally giving yourself the fuel you need as soon as you read that half a sentence. Yeah. That's a wonderful idea. Now, have you always, has writing been a form of therapy for you, would you say? No, it's not therapy. It's, um, mm, I think it's, half of my life it's not it's not really therapy with therapy i'm try uh, it's someone who writes for therapeutic reasons tries to work through something and i was lucky enough to have a wonderful family and not very many problems that i had to face um and i don't need to work through anything but i've got a very very big heart with lots and lots of imagination in it and this is my way to connect with a side of me that wouldn't be there without writing. What inspires you? What inspires your stories when you sit down to write? Well, I think I find inspiration everywhere. Usually it's like two or three, three things coming together um, and then just clicking in my head. Let's take an example. When I was a kid, and I drove to school on my bicycle. And one day I had a hawk flying very low in front of me. I think he was about two yards away, not very far. Um, and he sat on a branch just on the next tree over and looked at me. And I thought, wow, what, what if that would be a messenger from Mother Nature? And I didn't think twice about it. I went to school and forgot all about it. And a few days later, I saw a rainbow. And then it clicked in my head and I, and I decided I'm going to write a story about a girl with superpowers called Rainbow Girl. And uh, the animals are the messengers from her boss, which is Mother Nature. Um, and I had all the details worked out and then I left it in my box. And I only managed to write the story just now. But uh, that's the way it works. Uh, they just come, several things come together and create something in my mind. As you just travel through your journey of what is life, it, it just comes to yeah. you as you go along. Yeah. Sometimes it's a snippet in a newspaper, or sometimes it's just a picture I see, or a song I hear, and, and it just connects with something that's already there, and, and then I've got another story. The thing is, I've got so many ideas, I can't write them all, all write them at once. I have to choose, and that's the hard bit. Of course. So from a, from a sort of structural point of view, when these inspirations hit you, do you make a point of jotting them down uh, on, on a small card or piece of paper and just file it away? Or is it pretty much just a mental exercise of storing your ideas and concepts? Um, I think what I usually do is when, I've get, when I get a good idea, I can get back to my muse. Uh, the part of me that is creative, I call that my muse. Uh, I can get back to her and, and tell her to give me more details and come back with it later. And when that happens, when something comes back with details and with uh, something that makes me go, wow, that's a great idea, then I'll jot it down and keep it and try to wriggle it some, in somewhere so I can write it. Right. Now, when you have an idea like that that you describe to us and you begin writing, um, have you ever come back on a rewrite and and just realize it doesn't work or it's not what I thought it was and find that you have the ability to 
either trash it entirely or just hit it at such a different angle that it still works for you? Or will you let an idea that on, you know, a revision will not work for you, but you go, oh, I'll live with it, and you'll push it through? Uh, I'm never publishing anything that I'm not satisfied with. Um, the thing is, I want my readers to enjoy the stories. And if I assume that my readers are not that different from myself, then I have to enjoy it too. That doesn't mean I make it perfect, because uh, as I said before, there's no such thing as a perfect story. But I try to get it as good as I can. So if I hit a point in a story where I say, well, this is not going to work this way, I'll put it away for a while and think about it and rewrite it at a later date. Um, but the things that I do publish are always um, reworked in a way that they work for me. Whether it's fiction or nonfiction, sort of the techniques and, and some of the, the tricks that you were talking about will work for either? Yes, most definitely. You have to trust yourself. Once you finish the research for whatever you want to write um, and you have got all the knowledge inside of you, you can write it, whether it's an, an, a nonfiction article or a short story or a novel. You just have to trust yourself to write it. And you can always go back and repair things if they're not correct, but you have to get them down first because you cannot rewrite an empty page. So um, you have to sit, actually sit down and write. You will never be a writer if you don't write. Now, how do you manage, Kat? I know you have a, um, a family, you have children, you have a, a husband who has a career as well. How do you manage to continually write, continually be productive as a writer, and yet keep all those balls in the air that I know you do so well, running, running a family and all the other things? Well, I'm lucky my kids are um, in school already, so I've got about half a day where I can write. I know that other people have to work or um, they have less time or the kids are still too small, so you have to work your way around. What I did when my kids were still very small was I used a 10-minute timer. Um, there, there are always 10 minutes that you can use for writing, and if you sit down constantly and know and you know that uh, these 10 minutes are yours, you can uh, manage to write an, an incredible amount of words during that time. And if you write, say, 250 words a day, that will, that will come to a novel in a year as well. It's just the question of making room for the writing. Another great point. That's, that's fabulous. What, I know you talk to, to young writers and, and uh, novice writers uh, as well throughout your career. You get a chance to see and meet them. What other tips uh, or questions do, do they hit you with that, that you might be able to uh, offer some advice to my listeners? Many, many beginning writers are, I think they are too awed by what's out there already. They think they'll never be that good and they'll never be able to, to do this and to do that. But that's not the point of writing. The point of writing is to tell your stories. Even if you tell exactly the same story as someone else, it's not going to be exactly the same because you are you. Your experiences are different and your, your whole life is different. So the story will be different as well. I see that every time I get a, a writing prompt, there are so many s different stories coming from the same prompt that just illustrates the point. You have to be you, you have to sit down and write, and everything else will follow. Of course, it doesn't hurt if you actually go and learn the trade as well. And where would you recommend people, begin, uh, beginning writers, um, look for advice, uh, other than people like yourself? Um, Reading books, are there uh, forums, are there particular uh, programs that you would recommend? The first thing is someone who wants to write good books should read good books and should also read bad books because you, you never know what's good if, you don't ha if you've never read anything bad. So try to read as much as you can, not only in the genre you're writing, or um, also in other genres, in nonfiction, whatever you can get your hands on. Um, the other thing is Holly Lyle 
has a very, very helpful website with lots of free advice on writing. Uh, she has got a free course on how to write uh, flash fiction, which is very short fiction, uh, 500 words up to a thousand words maximum. And she's got, of course, she's got uh, courses that you can buy if you've got the money. But the flash fiction course is one that will take you um, by the hand and lead you through the basic setup of how to write a story. And it's absolutely free. I'll include that in the notes for our uh, viewers as well. That's Holly Lyle. Yeah. In part three of my interview with published author Katerina Gerlach, we'll discuss publishing options for an up-and-coming author. Changes in technology have certainly given writers more choices than ever before. Please join us for part three.